I'm Jody Schwartz. I'm an associate professor in the biology department. And I'm Mark Smith, an associate professor in the computer science department. And we teach bioinformatics, which is a cross-listed course between biology and computer science. And we aim to enroll half computer science majors and half biology majors. So one of the primary goals of our course is not just to teach students about what bioinformatics is um, and what the subject matter is, but also the importance of collaboration between different disciplines, uh, including how to communicate with people who speak a, a language that's different than the language you speak, um, and also just how to work with each other on projects. So one of the challenges that we've had is finding the right infrastructure for presenting course materials. In the past, we've used a wiki. Jody and I could individually put materials together, but the students didn't have the ability to, to contribute to those materials. They could, they could consume them, they could read them, but they couldn't put their own work up there on, on the wiki. This semester, having just recently been presented with the opportunity to use Google Apps for Education here at Vassar, we thought we would give th that suite of tools a try. The students could actually contribute to the content of, of those mm -hmm. course materials. So through Google Sites, uh, we set up a course page that consists of various tabs with different information, but one of them is our course calendar, which is sort of um, the hub of information for our class. It includes not only what we're doing in class every day, but links to various handouts or presentations or papers we're reading, and also links to works that we create during class um, by the students. And those works that we create during class, as well as the materials that we provide, are out there in Google Drive. We can uh, create documents in Google Drive and assign permissions to those documents for students to either be able to access read-only or, or with update access in case we want them to contribute content mm -hmm. to those documents. And then we can provide links to those documents right in our Google Sites web pages. And we can do this in real time in the classroom. So we might be working on group projects in the classroom. Students can create a Google Doc. Their group can create a Google Doc um, and share it with each other. And um, then we can take turns looking at the documents that students are creating during class on the screen. We can just select a document from among all the groups and look at what they've been working on. Uh, one application that we haven't used yet that we're hoping to try is the Google Hangout uh, so that students can work collaboratively in a way where they can share materials and um, either see each other or communicate with each other virtually even though they may be in two different dorms or in different locations and they also can work with us in this manner as well in evenings and weekends. Sometimes students ability to meet with each other outside of class is challenged by uh, students going off on job interviews or graduate school interviews, medical school, and when they go away they still need to work on their assignments, but if they don't have a, a good way to collaborate, then, then that's, a, that's a challenge and of course it requires the, the level of collaboration that we do. Google Apps has really allowed us to keep a more seamless flow of work from within the classroom to outside the classroom and then back into the classroom where we can sort of see what people are doing, um, the students can work outside of class and then continue that work in, in class.